All right, so let's first let's just take a look at the data um, just to get an idea of what we're dealing with here. All right, so we have a factory data, data from a factory, and this factory has multiple machines, and each one of those machines is measured every day. So the, the sensor value that's being measured on each machine each day is called S2. So for example, on December 2nd, 2014, for this machine, the value was 484.73. And there's multiple machines, just to show you that real quick. See how it flips right here, from machine one to machine two. And uh, the, the goal here is to create a running sum. So we our objective is to, to do a cumulative sum of these values over time. So for example, you know, this value on 12.2, we want to take 12.2 and add it to 12.3, then take 12.2.3 and then add that to 4, and then five, add that to 5, add that to 6, yada, 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 yada. But we want to do this for each individual machine, right? We don't want to continue summing over multiple machines, because that doesn't make any sense. We want to start the counter, start the sum over as we flip from one machine to the next. All right, so there's a lot of different ways you can do this in Modeler. This is my preferred way. Um, it works. Doesn't mean it's right. It's just the way I like to do it. Typically, I'll set up some dummy or some uh, utility variables. Um, the first one I call flipper. And flipper just tells me when we move from one machine to the next. And, and I do this with an offset function. So an offset function just looks back at so many records, in this case, one record, and gives me the value. So what this is essentially saying is that if the machine ID in the previous record equals the machine ID in the current record, then this flipper value is going to be equal to zero. Otherwise, it's going to be equal to one. So if the previous value is different than the current value, it's a one. If it's the same as it is in the current value, it's a zero. Uh, so you can see it's different here because there wasn't a record before that one. You can scroll down here to, and it goes from one to two. Right here, it's a one, right? So this is the flipper variable. It just tells us when we move from one machine to the next. The next utility or dummy variable that I create is called the counter. And this is just a running total. We use the at sense function. So it's the time number of records that have passed since flipper was equal to one, using the at sense uh, function inside of Modeler. So right here, for example, it's been two records since flipper was one. Here it's been 16 records since flipper, since flipper was one. All right, so now using these two uh, dummy variables, we're going to actually create the cumulative sum. So we'll drag a drive node to the canvas, connect it up. And we'll call this CUMLS2 for cumulative S2. And we'll make this a conditional variable. So if flipper is equal to 1, we want this value to be equal to S2. Right? If it's equal to zero or it's not equal to one, we want it to be, we're going to use the offset function and we're going to take the offset of CUML underscore S2, which is the variable that we're actually working with for a value of one plus the current value of S2. And let me run this and I'll show you exactly what I just did. All right, so cumulative S2 is equal to 484, 978, 1455. So it's basically this plus this plus this plus this plus this plus this all the way through. All right, something that's very similar to a running sum is a you know, a running average. Uh, to do that, we'll use a drive node. So we'll connect our stream up to the drive node, and we'll create a new variable. We'll call it uh, S2 underscore mean. Uh, we'll make it a conditional. And um, if flipper is equal to 1, 
then this value is going to be equal to S2, right? It's not equal to S2, we're going to use the at mean function, uh, which is going to give us the mean of a variable looking back a certain number of records, and the number of records we want to look back in this case is counter. So, you know, what's the average value of S2 looking back uh, the number of records in our counter field? All right, so S2 mean is going to be the average of these two, then it's going to be the average of these three, then it's going to be the average of these four, yada, 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 right? So we've created a running average, and just to confirm, you know, we want to make sure that it uh, starts over when we move to a different machine. Uh, in fact, it does. And just like you can create an average over your time series, you can do the same thing with uh, max. Let me just copy this. The only difference is, is that instead of using the at mean, we're going to use the at max. We can also do the at min, and there's a whole lot of different options. So here's our time series, and then this would be the running max, the running min, the running average, and the cumulative sum. So anyway, hopefully that was helpful. Like I said, there's a lot of different ways to do this, but those functions inside Modeler, um, typically the way I do it, and it works for me. Thanks a lot for your time.